Well, good morning and welcome to worship this Sunday as we celebrate Youth Sunday. Our service will be according to morning prayer, rite one, and begins with the opening sentences. I would give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. From the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that, he, that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and for our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance and amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, open thou our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I cannot speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. At the time, the disciples came to, came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Thomas Laws Dishroom III, also known as Tony and Bobby Smith's grandson. <laughs> I am a senior at Freeman High School. I have learned many leadership skills from St. James's. I share my time and talents with my community. Some of, th some of them include 18 plays in the past four years, three local, regional, and state vocal contest awards, student council, varsity golf, track and football teams, Big Siblings Club, Red Cross Club, Athletes Who Worship Christ, Future Business Leaders Association, and co-president of the Circle of Friends Club. This club is a peer group of buddies with special students to share basketball and other activities. I am a lifetime member of St. James's Episcopal Church. My ancestors have been members for more than 100 years. What you may not know is that I was born through this church. My parents met at this church, my grandparents, Bobby and Tony Smith, were married in 1960 at St. James's. My paternal great-grandmother was born at 1135 West Franklin Street on August 17, 1928. This house is on the corner. My family still calls us the Brown House. My paternal great-great-grandparents lived at the now-named Misha House next to the church from 1920 to 1976. They were all members of St. James's. My relatives suggested that St. James's Episcopal Church move their church to the next door lot. That is why the church is located here today. Many of my cousins are still members of St. James's. I choose to come to St. James's Episcopal Church. St. James's is my family. Some are my actual family members, and many are friends that I've made by participating in this church's many activities. I have participated in my baptism, nursery school, Sunday school, youth group trip to Bryce Ski Resort, Wednesday night dinners, filling backpacks for Caritas, packing food for Fimor, Christmas pageants, church picnics, Boy Scouts, Strymont camps, and retreats. I had perfect attendance in my fifth and sixth grade Sunday school classes. Christmas, Palm Sunday, and Easter were all highlights of my year. I love going to church and Sunday school. It is a great way to learn about God. Ten years of service in the church choir, Jerob Choir, Children's Choir, and Youth Choir, we sang many times together at the Martin Luther King Jr. service with Norfolk State University. If you have not been to this service, you should come next year. It is truly amazing. Over the years, I was an angel, sheep, shepherd, wise man, and Joseph in the Christmas pageant. I was also Kirk in the Sound of Music for the Feast of St. James's. I learned this song as a young boy. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. This song was written by Claire Herbert Wollstone, a Chicago preacher in the late 1800s. I think that it says a lot about my beliefs. Jesus wants us to act like children to enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, verse 1 through 5, the disciples asked Jesus, who then is the grace in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like the little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. When I was younger, my parents talked about God so much that I thought he was a member of the family. <laughs> I was like, who is Uncle God? And then my parents would give me the look. And no answer. I also remember when I was young, I had my baptism at this church, but I can confirm that I don't remember how, how it went. I know it had something to do with water and a long gown. My parents said that I loved my baptism. I smiled and laughed. I was also baptized with Jordan River water from, from a St. James mission trip. My grandmother, Bobby Smith, as you know, has done many amazing things in this church. She went on 31 mission trips. She was on the vestry. She sang in the parish choir. She was a Sunday school teacher, a lay reader, an usher, chapter 10 president at Westminster Canterbury. She also ran the mission vaccine shots and flu clinics when the shots were scarce. She resurrected the Episcopal Church woman and was president when womankind was started. My mother, Stephanie, was the first woman acolyte, Christopher, and team captain in the Commonwealth of Virginia in the 1970s, according to the Reverend Richard Baker. I'm an Eagle Scout from Troop 400 here at St. James's. I earned 54 merit badges, Order of the Arrow, the World Conservation Award, 
and the James E. West Award. I am in the Nawakwa Lodge, Brotherhood and Vigil. I am also an assistant scoutmaster. I learned at an early age that voluntary service to others is an important part of life. My church and family taught me these valuable lessons. Early in life, I was taught, if you want something done right, ask a busy person. I was taught to be a gatekeeper of St. James's. This church taught me, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. James 1, verse 22. I painted and cleaned the entire basement in the Misha house for two weeks over my summer vacation with my fellow scouts. Twelve cedar wood duck boxes were made and given to the Mattapanai and Monkey River Association at Sandy Point State Forest for my Eagle Project. I participated in many Feed More Can drives with scouts and at many schools. My grandfather, Tony Smith, was the scoutmaster of Troop 400, and he had over 250 Eagle Scouts during his 40 years of scouting. He has earned the Silver Beaver Award from the Scouts. He also received the St. George's Award from the Episcopal Church. Marty, he also worked for Mardi Gras, Mission Parties, Church Usher, Sandy Hook Mission in New York with my grandmother, six Our Little Roses mission trips in Honduras. He was the bonfire leader for Shrymont's Parish Retreats and Buzz's Salsa cooking team. Our Boy Scout Troop 400 stayed up overnight and cooked the pig and served the barbecue at the Rock Bottom Church picnic. Over the years, I found my calling at church camp in Orkney Springs, Virginia. Shrymont camps allowed me to connect with people who have the same beliefs as me. You may not know that this place strengthened my education through Christ. I attended St. George's Camp, St. Sebastian's Sports Camp, Family Camp, and St. James's Church Retreats at Shrymont. These camps encouraged my love for worship, sports, singing, theater, and fellowship. As a teenager, I would spend four weeks at Trimont per year. My grandparents took my mother and her four siblings to Trimont too. Their children spent about five weeks per summer. I was there for the 50th year Trimont camp celebration. My confirmation was postponed to the pandemic for more than one year. I was confirmed with different church groups from many congregations in our Episcopal Diocese of Virginia. This was not the traditional confirmation service that my parents were expecting. It was still inspirational and meaningful. During COVID, due to health issues, my family enjoyed watching the church services online. I am so glad that St. James's has invested in the state-of-the-art sound and video technology. This is so important to spread St. James's mission with other people who cannot worship in the sanctuary with the technology. Parishioners can view the services anytime. We are thankful for the handicapped seats, ramps, and elevators that are available to access the buildings and sanctuaries. The hearing stations and other building modifications and improvements are so helpful to the people who need the assistance. The future of St. James's and the Diocese of, De of Virginia will depend on being able to continually have new families with children to join and be involved in the church at a young age. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. This is one of my family's favorite hymns. Young children will build a firm foundation of love and faith in their Christianity, also by having their early memories and experiences at St. James's. The children, at St. James's, the children will want to grow up and return to raise their families at St. James's. I believe that by engaging the children and youth, we are enriching our church's future, our community, and the world. I am in the senior youth group and sing in the youth choir. I want to be elected for St. James's. I would like to be as active as my ancestors in the future. Today, I challenge each of you to be a gatekeeper of St. James's. A child, adult, or senior citizen can each volunteer to give time, intellectual, or financial support that will enrich our future generation. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.
will continue the prayers on page 54 of the Book of Common Prayer. I invite you to kneel as you pray. The Lord be with you. We'll now read suffrages A responsibly. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make our chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only thee and we as a Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Lord, the Lord be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us Spirit. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee, give us the help of thy grace that in keeping thy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for all in our congregation who are grieving and in need of care, as well as those who provide care to the grieving and those in need, especially our Stephen ministers. Please join me in lifting up to God those who are sick or in need and who have asked for our prayers. Mary Lee Allen, Dury Arquish, Linda Barnett, Steve Barnett, Paige Nance Brock, Stacy Burrs, Butch Butler, the Coble family, Vicki Driscoll, Paula Kramer Edwards, Tom Evelyn, Mary Fox, Jessica Friend, Jennifer Griffith, Helen Hill, Kathy Hoffman, Warwick Johnson, Barbara Cass, Jean Peter, Thomas Susan, Anna Lowe, the Maddox family, Bunky Miller, John Murphy, John O'Neill, Carol Pearson, Robin Price, Courtney Reynolds, Mickey Ramsey, Sonia Stone, Larry Sandberg, Bill Sherrill, Robbie Smith, Bradford Smith, Emily Tackle, Langdon Hall, Ann Turtle, Bobby Utah, the family of Terry Walls, Susie Peterman, Aaron Wright, Zara Zarema, Garrett, Ivy, Jimmy, Josh, Kevin, Seven, and Thomas, as well as Paula and the Ferguson family and the Troutman family. We continue to keep all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity in our prayers. We pray today for those who will be baptized, about to be baptized, especially John Neal Crowley, Henry Blaisdell Gear, Amelie Marshall Jones, and Grace Taylor Partee, who will be baptized here next Sunday. We give thanks for the lives and ministries of all who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially those who celebrate their birthdays today. Mark Burley, Virginia, Catherine Virginia Corey, Canon Deirdre, Catherine Ferguson, Carter Hogan, Herb Jackson IV, Jack Reichner Jr., 
Sam Riley, and Winstrace. We pray for the members of St. James's who are going on pilgrimage to the Holy Land this week. Betsy Blair, Bennett Burks, Catherine Burks, Mark Cooper, Alan Crawford, Teresa Darden, Suzanne Hall, Gregory Lockhart, Jeanette McKittrick, Jordan McKittrick, Randy Oglesby, Melinda Parker, John Reynolds, Bob Siegfried, Susan Siegfried, Rob Smith, Joe Willis, Chip Woodson, and Sandy Woodson. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Hudnall Ware the Fourth and Marjorie Benedict. We also pray for the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria and their families. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of thy people. In the multitude of thy mercy, look with favor upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I'd invite the congregation to stay seated for just a minute for a special blessing of the keys. So at this time, if there are any 10th um, graders, mostly, and their families, uh, but any 11th or 12th graders who haven't yet participated in the blessing of the keys or their families, you're all invited to come up uh, now. going to wait for everyone to come down. And I just wanted to echo what Amelia said. We haven't done the blessing of the keys in person due to COVID for the last two years. So if I have any upperclassmen, 11th and 12th graders that want to come down as well with their parents, please know that you're welcome. So at St. James's, we like to bless and celebrate certain milestones in our children and youth ministry programs. And some of them are faith milestones like baptism, confirmation, and then others we call life step milestones. So things like our fifth grade bridge ceremony to junior high and also um, graduation. And so the blessing of the keys is a life step milestone. We typically do it around 10th grade, and it is designed to acknowledge and bless the increasing independence of our youth here at church. And so they may be driving, they may be working outside the home, or they may just have more responsibility helping out their parents. And so it gives our church community an opportunity to pray for their safe passage as they start all these new things in their high school lives. But it also gives our church community the opportunity to pray for their parents. <laughs> Because I know with this increased independence and responsibility, there's a lot of trust and faith that has to go on for our parents. And it's a scary and a wonderful time, and we want to pray for them with that. So all youth are going to receive a metal keychain, and it has the um, seal of St. James's Episcopal Church on it. And it's just a physical token that they can put on their keys and carry with them to remember that they are a loved and watched child of God, loved by both God, but also loved and watched by the members of this congregation who care for them so dearly. So um, that's the introduction for the milestone, and I'm going to turn it over to Blake to give the blessing. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit who accompanies us on all journeys, both short and long. We pray, Lord, that you protect these youth, their passengers, and all whom they pass with a steady hand and a watchful eye. In the midst of worry, let there be trust, patience, peace, and pardon. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
All right. Let's give a round of applause to those young people in their family. And then let's also uh, start our time of greeting and announcements by just saying some thank yous for the folks that have put together uh, these Youth Sunday services today. So first of all, Katie, uh, we couldn't have done it without you, so if you would just stand up, let's just give a round of applause. And then all of the youth who have participated um, both at 9 o'clock and at this service, so Thomas, you're up there. So Thomas, all of our musicians, all of our ushers and readers and acolytes, just thank you to all of you. So let's give them all a round of applause as well. So it's always so fun to celebrate our young people, and as Thomas's uh, sermon reminded us, we all have the opportunity to choose to continue to support the growth of our young people in this place. Um, if you are new or visiting, welcome. We are glad that you're here. Um, DeWitt is our greeter this morning. He's in the back, and he has an Ask Me name tag. So if you're new or visiting and would like some more information about St. James's, just find DeWitt after church, and he would love to get in touch with you. Uh, a couple of announcements just for the good of the community. First of all, uh, Wednesday night programs are back. We've had two Wednesdays that have been really well attended uh, with young people and older people and everyone in between, but we do need some help um, getting the numbers right for dinner. If you are planning on coming to Wednesday night dinner, we ask you to RSVP every week, and we're gonna, we bumped that deadline up to ask you to, um, to register by noon on Monday so that we can shift our catering numbers if we need to. Last week we ran into a little snafu because we couldn't kind of change the numbers at the last minute. So uh, please do RSVP, but we would love for you to come and join us for dinner as well as for programs. Second of all, our Mardi Gras party is coming up um, on Tuesday the 21st. It's going to be a great event in Valentine Hall. There's lots of, um, uh, lots of information about Mardi Gras with all the volunteer opportunities and various um, ways for you to participate in the e-chimes, so please do um, uh, check that out and buy a ticket and come and support outreach and missions. And then um, finally, uh, God in Your Inbox is one of the Lenten traditions that has been a part of our community life in years past, and this year it's coming back. It might look a little bit different from how we've done it in the past, because this year we're inviting all of you to participate by writing a reflection on the scripture for the day. So we are seeking volunteers to be reflection writers. We'll send you the scripture as well as a sort of outline of, um, of writing that reflection, and we'd love to hear from you. So what we'll be doing is have an opportunity for people to sign up to receive that God in Your Inbox email throughout the Lenten season, and then we'll be sending out emails certain days during Lent, depending on how many folks we have sign up. Have I forgotten anything, anyone? All right. Well, it's great to be with all of you again, and um, have a wonderful week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
I invite you to kneel as you're able for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we have been worthy servants to give you the name of some of our rights. For all our goodness and all our kindness, our sons and all. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of us. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord.